Howdy, Rob Lee here, and I wanted to tap in real quick with a special message from the Station North Arts District. Vote for Station North. USA Today has nominated the Station North Arts District as one of the nation's 10 best creative and cultural hubs. So join us in voting once a day through July 4th. The link to vote is in the episode description. And this week, we're excited to announce the return of the Station North Summer Art Walks on the final Fridays of the following months, July, August, and September. In July, Spotlight on Charles North. In August, Spotlight on Greenmouth West. And in September, Spotlight on all of the dark district. So the entire district is being covered in that one. Uh, Step into artist studios, galleries, pop-ups, and performance spaces that make Station North one of the 10 best art districts in the country. So that's July 29th, August 26th, and September 30th. For more information, visit stationnorth.org. The Station North Arts District is a proud program of the Central Baltimore Partnership. Welcome to The Truth in This Art. I am your host, Rob Lee. You you should know me by now, folks. Uh, Today, I have the privilege of speaking to um, head chef, owner, forged, professional mushroom forger, farmer, one of my friends, Chef Chris Amendola. Welcome to the podcast. What's up, Rob? Good to see you again, man. Good to see you as well, (laughs) sir. Um, So, you know, since this is the second time you've been on this um, prestigious podcast, (laughs) uh, I want to um, encourage you, invite you to uh, give the folks the vital stats. Uh, Tell them who you are, what your food's about, um, what you're about, and what's that typical day look like? And I would imagine it's not a typical day per se. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess my typical day is probably what most people would call a little wild, but um, uh, so, Jesus, I guess, you know, waking up in the morning, having a cigarette and coffee, you know, start the day. then, you know, depending on the time of year, well, obviously, got to take care of the girls. By girls, I mean chickens. Uh, <laughs> Chick <yeah>. magnet. <laughs> yeah. um, so take care of them. And then, you know, depending on the time of year, you know, I'm either rushing down to work to get paperwork done or uh, rushing out to the woods to go check some spots, uh, see what see what we can find for the day. Um, yeah, getting into work, paperwork, you know, that's, that's always... Uh, it's always fun, um, you know, and then jumping into the kitchen, trying to figure out what we're doing for the day and, um, you know, getting the menu set and, and uh, doing our thing. So with it, and, and, we're, and we're doing this second interview as you're, like, have moved as of, what, a few months back to Station North from Hampton, right? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, I guess, officially moved, well, we officially opened uh, early December here, so we... God, I don't even remember when we shut down over there. I'm like early November. And that then, sounds about right. Yeah. yeah, I think so. And then, God, what a what a time crunch of a move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys got over here, and you know, welcome addition to to this neighborhood because um, you know you can look on one side where you're at. And then compared it to the other side, and there are the, the skeletons and the ghosts of restaurants, whereas on this side, there's a few places to eat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so it's, it's a welcome addition there. And, you know, I'm an evangelist for the shrooms, the mushrooms. Yeah. So, I mean, if anybody asks, I'm like, look, you got to go over there to Forge. You know, ask for my man Chris. Tell him Rob Lee sent you. It's almost like an ad. You know, it's, it's great. <laughs> So uh, cooking, cooking with hyper local produce is, is rewarding in many terms in terms of like freshness, versatility in your menu. You were touching on that, figuring out like what things are going to look like. Um, and, but it presents challenges, right? Like a short season. It's like, how are we going to switch that out? Right. Like we don't want right. to do anything that's goofy. Like, you know, fermentation and certain measures to preserve things are one. But ultimately, freshness is, is, is a key thing. Right. So you have to constantly pivot and especially coming out of the last two years of pivoting is is there an experience that equipped you to work in this in this manner you know honestly like not that i can really think of um and i don't know like where this kind of like quick shifting you know throughout the throughout the day or even throughout the week came from you know i i i I like it because it holds my attention better i get bored really easily you know so it kind of like fed that need for me to be able to you know keep me going and keep me you know inspired by different things and throwing different things on the menu and switching it up and so 
So when you come to Forge, you know, we're never going to be bored, is what you're saying? No, no, no. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> and, and, and one of the additions I've no, noticed w is uh, having the, the cocktails now. Mm. That's a new new addition um, compared to the, the previous location. And um, so with that, does that add to it? Do you have someone that's running the cocktail program? Tell me about that in, in terms of what the, the ethos with your food is. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I am super stoked about the cocktail program right now. Our, our beverage director, um, Reed, uh, I've known him for quite some time. We opened um, bookmakers way back when uh, over in Fed Hill. Yeah. And uh, he left to go to LA to work for some pretty heavy hitters out there. And um, somehow I got lucky and he came on and helped us here, you know, and it's, you know, for it being uh, the tail end of winter, early spring, you know, he's already put out some fire, fire cocktails. Um, and I think going into this main forging season, I think it's going to get really, really cool at the bar. I'm, yeah. I'm like super stoked because <laughs> there's always like, you know, little things that I find that might not really be enough to do anything on the menu for, or, you know, something like that, but like giving it to him to infuse cocktails or whatever the case may be, I think it's it's going to be dope. It's okay. going to be really, really cool. <laughs> so so I, I, you, you mentioned something I wanted to ask about right right there a second ago. When there's something that, you know, and I can go back to the, the turkey egg situation from way back when, <laughs> but when, when there's something that's on the menu that you think there's enough to maybe have a handful to do a few things with, would that be an instance where you're like, all right, we got like five of these, oh, pull yeah. up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember, remember instances at the, the other location where I was like, yo, I got 10 of these. That's it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, I always think. I, it might be easier now because we got the chef's table, you know, and I want to I want that to be like super focused on, you know, what we do and how we do it. So now, you know, between the bar and that, you know, if I only find a little of something out in the woods or like a specific mushroom or something, yeah. it's going straight to that. You so, know? So, so tell me more about the chef's table, because that's 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 a new thing. And I, I know that I've been slacking. I know I need to get my <laughs> my geeks over there to the chef's table. So tell me more. Oh, man, it's it's uh, it's been really, really cool. Um, um, you know, on paper, it's seven courses and I'm not going to tell you how many <laughs> courses it, is, it ends up being, but it's definitely significantly more than that. But, um, it's fun, you know, it's, it's just kind of, um, really sheds a light on, you know, what we're trying to do. And, you know, honestly, it's kind of my, um, set up for my next restaurant you know yeah. so it's kind of just it's kind of doing a dual purpose there for yeah. me it's a little focus group eh? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so you, so you get to really like show off too a little oh, bit yeah. oh yeah, yeah absolutely because when i think of a chef's table i at least the the, the videos and, and the clips that i've seen around it from people like because everybody's on social media right i immediately think of when you go to like a japanese restaurant and like look this is what's coming out next yeah yeah and uh yeah that's 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 really cool um <laughs> uh, I, and I, I, I have another great question for you that's not in here, so I got I to gotta remember it. Um, can you recommend a book, right? Like, you know, one of the things that, that I try to do on here is give away the free dope, you know? Like, is there a book or something that you found particularly, like, influential to you, or informative to you as being not only a chef, but also, like, in a leadership role? Uh, pro this one probably not so much in a leadership role, but uh, way back when um, I was probably like 16 or 17, and uh, one of my chefs gave me uh, the French Laundry Cookbook. Um, God, I still remember like looking through that for the first time and just being like blown away. Like <laughs> this is this is food, and this is what these guys do. Like, you know, I, I was so inspired by that book. Um, and I think that's kind of a, where a big part of the forging came from for me because there was a whole chapter in there about, you know, forgers bringing in mushrooms. And I was like, man, that's so dope. I would, I'd love to be able to do that, you know. <laughs> but living in Florida, like, you know, I don't think those things really exist down there. I mean, there's obviously wild edibles and stuff like that down in Florida, but, you know, you probably can't get a whole lot of the mushrooms that I like and stuff like that. But that book really, like, you know, did it for me. I remember... 
one night I might have been like 16, staying up until like one o'clock in the morning, cooking the pasta recipe out of there, you know, making fresh pasta. And everybody else is asleep, and I'm like, you know, stretching pasta and boiling it, and it was it, yeah. That, that was probably the main the main book for me. That's that's great. I um I've just been like cycling this uh, this series of. Uh, Audiobooks, and mm. it's been just how to better relate with with people or have you, and, and people of different like like uh, disciplines and different backgrounds. Mm. Like, I try to have a degree of versatility, and you can look at the catalog of people I've had on. It's like you've talked to this person, and you've talked to this person, and being able to have a, a, a cogent and meaningful conversation with them without it feeling like one note. Yeah, yeah, and. I think going through those Robert Greene books has helped me with that. It's like, oh, okay, this is how you talk to this person. And that's the, the, the lane in which I look at. Um, there, it's one that I, I came across as a dude I'm going to interview soon. He, he did a podcaster manual. So I'm like, look, man, you need to have me on the next edition. It's just like, you know when you get the deluxe edition? Yeah, you remember yeah. when like the, the red iPhones came out? Yeah. It's just me. It's just like, it's me morphing into him. It's like, it's gotten black. <laughs> That's funny. So, so tell me, tell me about perception. Um, this, this going into the kitchen with a feeling, whatever that feeling may be, how does that affect like your, your cooking at the end of the day or how you operate within the kitchen? It totally affects it, man. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a big, uh, I'm big on, you know, you cook, cook with love first, like cooking is a, a, a labor of love for sure. You know, um, and I definitely think, you know, how you're feeling that day affects you know, what you put on the menu or what you're cooking, um, you know, so I've actually changed a lot. Some of my guys joke about it because they've known me from the past restaurants, yeah. you know, where I was like a drill sergeant and like, this has got to be perfect. And <laughs> redo it if it's not, you know, and nowadays I'm just like, you know, all right, like, let's shift, you know, let's, let's try something different, you know, and it, it was, it was just too stressful, you yeah. know, and, um, you know, I I never wanted this restaurant to be like that. You yeah. know, I'll save that for the next restaurant. But you know, I always try and go into the kitchen like clear headed and like you know just calm and collective. And you know, I think I think the food really translates through that. So you're you're describing a a period when you had a British accent and short, <laughs> and short blonde spikyish yeah. hair. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, 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 that's great. That's great. I, I was waiting. I was waiting. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 big, and and I think it is. It's 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 one of those languages too. Mm. You know, anything I think that's creative, and obviously we're in this kind of creative, this arts district. It's feelings throughout. Like mm. when something's going well, when something's weird is in the city. This is almost like a pulse for it, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And. I think people go to a restaurant, like I, I came from the coffee shop before I came in here and it was a weird exchange. Mm. Like dude was really tight about, like the barista was really tight about something and the, uh, the, 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 the two dudes that were in front of me, they got their stuff, but he got tight with them. And I was like, they may not come back here. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. may never come back here. This experience of getting coffee, which should be a fun experience. Absolutely. You can, you can go to the Dunkin' and slug out some coffee. <laughs> But they went to a neighborhood coffee shop and had, like, I don't know if it was something that happened in the kitchen because um, he's griddling or if it was something he carried in outside of work. But that shifted what that experience is. So I think even even what I'm doing, if I came in here like, ah, it's like, huh, I don't know if I want to do this interview now. I don't know if I have anything to reveal. And I, and I think. In, in going through those um, those Robert Greene books I was describing earlier, it's helped me better understand when people have nerves, because I just go in and like, hey man, how's it going, man? Double gun pointing everyone. <laughs> and I, I'm looking really douchey when I do it. And I don't know how someone presents being nervous or being uneasy or, or what have you. So sometimes I'll slow it down just to make sure that person is comfortable. Yeah, yeah, Because absolutely. it'll throw you off. It's like, Am I the dick here? Like what, what? Like what are we doing? Yeah. And I've gotten better at recognizing that, and that comes purely out of that because I'll look at and go back and listen to older episodes mm. where I didn't recognize the person was a little nervous, or I may have been a little nervous, and it doesn't start off crisp. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually it writes itself, and it feels like it's a natural conversation. But a lot of times, 
I feel like, oh, this person hates me because usually you're not you're like we're friends, but usually you don't. I don't know the person. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, all right, I gotta get myself over <laughs> in thirty minutes. Let's make it happen. And no, I know, I know exactly what you mean. You know, and that's one thing I really wanted for this restaurant was, you know, I wanted people to feel comfortable and have fun. And you know, I worked in so many restaurants here in Baltimore, and it was just like. It was a drag to go to work every day and just like, you know, and it wasn't fun, you know, and I was like so burnt out on it. And going into this other, you know, when we were over at Hamden, you know, I just wanted to have fun cooking again. You know, I wanted to take the stress out of it, even though it was still incredibly stressful, Mm -hmm. um, you know, but like have fun with it. And like and it kind of created this culture here that is I mean, it is so unlike any other restaurant I have ever worked at. Um, and it's great, and I think it really translates to the guests, you know, and I think it just really heightens everybody's experience. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to, so it's hard to go to a place that you get cookies at the end, and there's freaking toy dinosaurs everywhere, <laughs> yeah. and then you're like, oh, wow, this is, people are, people are unhappy in here. It's like, no, it has to have that vibe. It's still, there's still a certain level of... And, and maybe this comes from my reading the Bourdain book, obviously, but maybe it comes from a degree of there is a certain level of based on the job that you're at and the environment that you're at, that's going to have a certain level of energy. That's just what comes with that territory. Right. Um, so I would imagine like you, you work for an accounting firm, right? Mm-hmm. It's a certain culture that's there. I don't imagine it's the same thing in the kitchen, but there's degrees that it can be more heightened. Yeah, yeah. And then that's what I think you were descri- dis- discussing and describing there. Oh, like, yeah. oh, this is stressful for, for um, this, this scope. Mm, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, I think, you know, when you go to a place and you see the staff is unhappy and, you know, it totally translates to, you know, whatever the case may be. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I love it here. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so tell me about a little bit it, it, the intentionality in making that move from from Hamden that I think like all right, from your perspective and being in this unique spot, you've been here for, you know, some months at this point and you've been in Hamden for a couple of years. So how how do they what was the thing getting moving here and how how do those two locations kind of you know differ in terms of maybe the people that are coming there or the environment the neighborhood that you're in so so the move i think you know i I needed to be able to expand what we were doing um you know i was doing literally like 90 percent of everything you know running the business over there and stuff like that and it was just it was a lot you know not that you know we move into a bigger space and still a lot you know (laughs) but i think it kind of gave us a chance to grow and get some more uh people on the team that you know i could put some work off to and you know stuff like that and you know i think the biggest part of the move for me was you know i didn't want to lose that um atmosphere that we kind of kind of built over there you know so that was a big part for me uh is making sure the space felt similar to what we had over there um and i i felt you know uh this space that we moved into was you know it was it and you know it's had that same feeling uh i was looking at another space before and almost signed the paperwork on it and you know it would have taken a lot to get it there but it you know didn't have that feeling right off the rip uh which i needed um but you know being in between two heavy hitting restaurants, you know, that have been here, you know, one's been here for close to 20 years and the other, you know, a little over a year now, um, you know, and over there we were kind of mm-hmm. on our own, you know, down, down the street on Chestnut, you know, and I think it just kind of heightens everybody's, you know, businesses and experiences and stuff like that. So, you know, I think a big part of it was just trying to, trying to grow the business. Yeah. And I think, the, it, that makes sense. And the growth component is like you guys were cranking out really dope stuff, but like on the corner, yeah. like side, tucked away kind of side of things. Whereas here you have a train station there. Mm. You have 83 there. You have uh, two movie theaters over here. Right. You have a bunch of different potential for foot traffic. And I think once people are back out, once the weather breaks and all of that stuff, that's only going to be an added addition. Like really, you know, when... I heard about the news. I may have heard it from a, a secret source <laughs> about the news or what have you. I was very excited about it. I was like, oh, that's 
like three blocks from where I'm at on the weekend. I was like, we got to make it over there. <laughs> and um, and it's, it's, it's just really, really great. And I think, you know, again, going back to what I was saying earlier about, you know, if people are coming out of, let's say, big improv, for sake of argument, mm. and they're doing a improv class, it's like, all right, we're done. Let's go get some pops. You guys have a bar now. Let's go get some food that's not tapas, that's not... I guess Venezuelan, yeah. and we can kind of switch it up. It's like, oh, I want something fresh. I want something that's this, yeah, and yeah. there you go. Yeah, absolutely. I've walked with people who've gotten popcorn just to get popcorn. <laughs> Shout out to Kelly Walker, uh, just to get popcorn, because uh, it was like, oh, I don't know what the food options here, or who don't want a crepe, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's see. Um, th this was the question I wanted to ask you. So a as a chef, what, what is what is the... What is that sign of, like, a, appreciation for, for, like, somebody that, that comes out? Like, is it, you know, hang at your table for a minute and chit-chat with you? Is it, I'm going to send some other shit out for them. Like, what, what, what is that thing? Because I've gotten that from some chefs, but not all chefs, of, hey, Rob, what's going on, bro? I got some new stuff coming out. This is not even on the menu. This is coming out next. What, what is that, that sign of appreciation or, like, validation, I guess, that comes from a chef when it's too, like, patrons that they know and they kind of jam with uh oh man that's a good question i would uh i think it depends you know what we got going on in the kitchen or like you know if we're getting new product in or testing something you know i, I think it really just depends on the day i mean yeah. obviously i'm gonna you know, <laughs> slam out some food or you know some cocktails to them or something yeah. you know but um you know it just really depends it's, it's it's a FaceTime thing. Like it feels because I look ballery sometimes, and because uh, <laughs> the, the girl face will be like, you know, why is the chef just hanging out over here? And I was like, oh, because me and him are boys. It's like, huh, huh, huh. It's like, huh, is that gold flake on your steak? It is actually. Uh, <laughs> and um, I was like, yeah, this is better than theirs. They got the same thing, but they don't have the same thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I think it's. Um, and, but I think it goes back to what you were saying earlier. It's it's one of those things you got to cook with love. So yeah, yeah. if you're seeing your people there and they're in the moment, you know, if there's like a free moment or what have you, like, let me go out there and pop over, say hi. And, you know, like I, I go to like Chef Zach from True Chesapeake. Mm -hmm. I, I saw him a couple weeks ago and he's like, hey, man. I was like, we did that interview a while ago. I was like, I'm surprised he remembers me. <laughs> and um, and it, it worked out. And um his episode is going to come up, uh, you know, relatively soon or what have you. It'll be out by the time this episode is out. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's cool to see people, you know, in, in their environment. And I think patronage is a, is a key thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, a big part of that, too, is, like, you know, these people coming to support me and my dream. You know what I'm saying? Like, and when I see them come back regularly, like, you know, I'm going to go out of my way to make them feel special coming to the restaurant. You know, whether it's me sitting there talking to them and, you know, other guests are like, oh, my God, the chef owner is talking to that table for forever. Who <laughs> are they? Who is this guy? Yeah, 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 you know, or like, you know, slamming their table with a bunch of food. Like, you know, it doesn't, it is what it is, you know. Because when uh, we were out there at uh, the old location and uh, Chef Levy was there and my girl was like, you know, Chris only came over there to talk to you and him and then went back to the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I mean, it's the two big guys that sit next to each other. And it's like, oh, they know food, obviously. <laughs> From different perspectives. Uh, <laughs> So, now this is this is an um, interesting thing. So I want to talk about your your culinary school background and all of that good stuff. Um, tell me about that experience and um, like just overall like those those kind of highlights. But also, what was the uh, toughest dish or concept for you to kind of master? Because I know everyone has one. Hmm. You, you can't go Levar Ball about it. It's like <laughs> never lost. You know, honestly, I, I've been thinking about this question, and I have you know honestly, I no idea, but. You know, I think in general, eggs. I think eggs are one of the hardest things to master uh, huh. cooking properly. So that's the guy with the chicken farm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, when it, whenever somebody comes in, you know, is interviewing for a job here or whatever, like I'll have them make me an omelet. Like I don't, you know, don't care what you put in it. I just want to see how you cook some eggs, yeah. you know. And <clears throat> like it's so true. Like you can you can totally tell so much about how somebody cooks and where they are in their career by how they cook eggs you know and it, it may seem like such a simple thing but you know cooking eggs properly is very very challenging hmm. so as i move into this destination of being a 
I'm a food person. I don't, I don't know. My, we'll, we'll talk about that off mic. Uh, I, I'm terrible at eggs. Really? Yeah. I, I can't make an omelet to save a lot. I can do a very good scrambled egg. I can do all that good stuff, what have you. But one, I don't make eggs enough either. I think that's another thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just like... I'm the person that makes eggs. It's like I I love omelets. Don't get me wrong, but it's like, hey, can you make some eggs, please? <laughs> and you know, you you probably heard my takes on when people have something that's a little mid. It's like let me sneak some cheese in there. It's so much cheese in my eggs because I don't do them right. It's like, uh, cheddar. <laughs> that's better, right? <laughs> So I read that you've been a consultant and you, you've risen from the, from the ranks of sous chef, sous chef to executive chef and owner. Tell me about how some of those changes you've experienced, like moving like up those ranks into this this leadership role, what have you. Because, you know, I hear I heard from this one dude, uh, one chef that I had on. Uh, he was like, chef's a leader. He's like, never forget that. He's mm-hmm. like, a lot of people are cooks. He's like, not everybody's a chef. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so true. Like, you know, I used to. I came up in the old school days where it was just yelling and screaming and oh, old man Amendola. Yeah, yeah, you know, and <laughs> you know, kind of that blanket of treating everybody the same, you know. And over the years, you know, I've really learned uh, you can't manage people like that. You know, that's not that's not a good leader. Um, you know, and and so now nowadays, like it's more, you know, you got to learn, you know, what people respond to the best, you know, or you know, what, you know, managing methods are better for certain people um, and kind of and kind of go from there. And, you know, I think a big part of being a leader for me is, um, you know, I think a lot of times people uh, kind of lead from the back, you know what I'm saying, and kind of sit back and, you know, just be like, do this, do this, do this, you know, and that's not me. Like I, I'm, I'm gonna be on that with those front lines, like you know, pulling that cart, you know. And yeah. I, I want, you know, nobody's gonna work harder than me, you know, especially at my own restaurant. So like, you know, I feel like, you know, in doing that, people gain more respect for what you do. And you know, when you go out of your way to help people, you know, no matter what the case is, if it's in their personal life or outside, you know, I think it just kind of creates a better work environment and you know relationship between the you know team member um i think you know it's times have changed you know it's it's not it's definitely not like it used to be in the in the restaurant world which is good because i think you know honestly it, it needed to change um um but yeah you know yes i mean when a v- variety of people come into a an industry that may not have been the most inclusive or most uh, versatile industry, mm-hmm. but then you have people speaking and making food that is not reflective of who's running the place sometimes. Oh, yeah. You have these different thoughts that come in, these different ideas, and people aren't going to accept that, that same thing with this, this notion of yeah, you, you, you shovel enough S, then eventually you'll have your own place and you'll be and able to do this. That's exactly how I came up. And, like, that's not, it's not logical anymore, you know? Not not at all. And it's just, like, I mean, it's, I guess it served its purpose back in the day. I, I think it's, it's that middle ground where, like, you and I are about the same age. So there's, like, this shift of we are aware of that stuff, but yeah. also it's like, no, nah, I think we've able, we're able to shift away from that and, like, all right, this needs to be less. It's like, I know what I need from you, mm. and I can articulate that, but I don't need to yell. I don't need to do any of that wild stuff because it's ultimately, look at the industry shift and in, in unemployment recently, yeah. people leaving, yeah. and it's not purely money is purely culture it's a big piece in culture so i don't know how bad the restaurant industry has been hit by the max exodus exodus of people like just quitting but if it's a culture thing and you have places where not every place is like forest obviously so you have some places who are like get your ass together yeah. and throwing eggs at oh, people yeah. yeah absolutely i mean like <clears throat> even even coming up in in that kind of culture you know like I hated it, you know, I hated getting just screamed at, you know, it sucked. And, you know, when I was opening this spot, like, I was like, I'm not, like, I can't do that. Like, it's going to be stressful enough on me as it is running a business by myself and trying to learn all that. 
and then to add that on top of it, like, no, 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 like, I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. You I know? need an assistant yeller. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that, I always try to, you know, with this restaurant, like, you know, I'm, I make all the decisions. So it's like, you know, what did I hate when I was coming up, you know, and, mm -hmm. and what didn't I like about, you know, how my bosses treated me when, you know, I was working for other people, you know, I mean, shit, like, you know, I started paying people weekly just because I, I hated getting bi-weekly checks. Like, it was, it sucked, you know? So, yeah. you know, it's stuff like that that <laughs> I wanted I wanted to make different for, for my company, you know? When you start doing your, your own thing, you're able to, within certain parameters, make your own rules. Mm -hmm. So, like, this notion, this antiquated notion of, you gotta put two weeks in a hole, it's like, I've already worked. <laughs> and it's just like, Sometimes that doesn't apply for everyone, and I remember with the the way I guess the pandemic and all kind of came, was came out, mm. like it was like released a mixtape or something. The way the <laughs> pandemic came out, um, it, it was a lot of shifts. So like you know, I'm working remotely, and I was like, there's an assumption that I'm solvent, that I have internet at home, and I'm actually paying my bills. Yeah, yeah, and. It's like a lot of these liberties were taking from from like the workforce or what have you from the hires up. And I think a lot of people realize like this is not working. You guys need us more than you're acknowledging. And I think some places saw it and I think some places were able to pivot and some places didn't want to pivot because mm -hmm. they liked that old setup and how things were working. And some of those places didn't really thrive or survive. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think if anything good came out of the pandemic, I mean, it definitely opened our eyes to what wasn't working and what was working and you know um <clears throat> i definitely think you know a lot of restaurants had to shift on how they were you know operating and stuff like that and you know definitely the restaurant industry got hit hard with you know the mass exodus of, of people and you know i was kind of nervous coming into this bigger space and needing a bigger staff and like you know wasn't sure what the situation was going to be but you know literally literally we just posted on social media that we were looking for help and like we we've been fine like I've, i have been so blessed with you know a solid staff and you know people just willing to go go to bat you know for us and you know help help get this done i mean when when, when things first went down i was like man can i go work there for chris i don't know how to cook eggs anything, but. <laughs> <laughs> so so this is the last real question i have for you um before i get to those rapid fire questions that people love so much um what is your signature dish that represents you as a chef Oh man, that's such a good question. Just because <laughs> everything pivots, you know, so much here. But I, I think the mushroom stew. You know, I, I this guy. I, I don't know why everything goes back to the mushroom stew, but I don't know. It's that dish for me. Like it was. I never intended it to be like a staple dish of the restaurant. You know, but it was so hard to take off the menu just because of the mushrooms that we were getting and like. You know, obviously I love mushrooms, but like just how it changes so much throughout the year, mm -hmm. you know, without ever really changing. And I don't know, I, w I would say if there's one dish that kind of, that would be it. Uh -huh, meticulous, lots of ingredients oh, yeah. and delicious. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, it's so simple, but I mean, we, you know, obviously it's not something most people would do at home, but you know, it's, it's so complex and so just, it's wild. It's I, wild. I just like the way that you put it when we, we did it in that, that video thing. You're like, no one's going to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, Chris. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. People ask me for the recipe for that all the time. Right and I'm, like, I'm like, all right, I mean, here it is. But like, you're not going to make it. You got, you got to make a garlic puree that takes about 12 hours to make uh, an onion puree that takes about four hours to make yeah. you know blend those and then make a mushroom stock like are you really gonna do that you do know you really have the time between your zoom calls <laughs> you're gonna go out and pick a bunch of mushrooms and mm -hmm. you know yeah go ahead and eat a few while you're at it just you know don't even check them all right so it's, it's time for this rapid fire situation sweet, sweet let's do it so i got i got um i got four questions for you all right first one uh which words or phrases do you most overuse? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can say one of those on, on. You can give me the first letter of it. <laughs> uh, starts with an F and ends with yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's about right. That's about right. That's, that checks out. <laughs> Which cartoon character do you relate to most? Oh, oh, man. You're a child of the 80s, as, as I am, so definitely 
cartoons were in front of us a lot, I would imagine. You know, I, uh, this is a good one. I like this one. Uh, I would have to say Captain Planet, man. Because uh, <laughs> you're wearing a Captain Planet. Yeah, like, the, you know. Uh, Randomly wearing my Captain Planet hoodie, but... Yeah, I mean, like, he was the man, dude, trying to bring back, like, you know, everything. I always wanted to be one of those kids so bad, man. <laughs> Mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's Earth, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, what do you value most in friends? Oh, that's another good one. Um, I don't know. You know, maybe just respect and loyalty. You know, I tend to... I'm one of those people that would go above and beyond to help my friends, you know, whenever whenever they need it, you know, and you know, maybe maybe a little bit getting that back, you know. I yeah. think I think that's that's cool. Yeah, it's like that's that's the language that one is speaking, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And it's a, it's a reciprocal thing and but not transactional. It's like being able to notice the difference. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it kind of goes along with, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated, you know. Well, you're just throwing the golden rule out there, all right? Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> so this is the last one. Um because you know, it makes sense to ask and I haven't asked anyone this question in a while. Uh -oh. What is your last meal? If you could plan out and Ooh. say, look, this is the last thing that I'm eating. It, you're like what is what's your last meal you know, honestly like i think my if i could pick out my last meal it would totally be like just the dopest charcuterie board <laughs> you know nice glass of white burgundy you know some dope pates and dried meats oh my god i'd be i would be so happy <laughs> so happy <laughs> gobble gobble amandola here <laughs> so um so, yeah, thank you uh, for coming on to the podcast. And um, I want to invite you and encourage you to tell the fine folks where to check you out and to check Foraged out. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. I, you know, I appreciate it. I love your podcast. So, so you know, to be back on is, is pretty dope. Um, but, yeah, we're uh, over here in Station North now, uh, 1709 North Charles. Uh, business Instagram is forge.eatery. And mine is uh, chefing it up. <laughs> uh, hit the website, forgeeatery.com. Yeah. yeah. So there you have it, folks. I want to again thank Chef Chris Amendola for coming on to the podcast. And I am Rob Lee saying that there is food in and around Baltimore, specifically Station North. You have to look for it. <laughs> <laughs>